Hi, I'm Frederick from Arnold Group at University of Wisconsin Madison. Today, I feel very honored and happy to give you a brief video talk on one of our research concerns. Uh, we're currently investigating the graphene based nanomembranes, which is a very prospective candidate for a next generation filtration material to solve our society's water challenges. So, we are currently facing very serious water scarcity including the shortage of drinking water and the limitation to water supply and infrastructure. Our goal is that we are trying to obtain more drinking water worldwide and at the same time cutting the cost and getting more access to it. So the approach to achieve our goal is either to exploit the tremendous undrinkable seawater or to recover wastewater from the industry. So according to United Nations, by 2050, most parts of our world will be facing severe water stress. And the water shortage is actually staring us in the face. So that's why a new invention of water purification technique is super urgent for our human beings. So to start, let's see what's actually inside the water that makes it undrinkable for us. This table shows us a var large variety of different kinds of impurities in the water. Those impurities with different sizes require different kinds of purification techniques. People have used particulate filtration to remove large size particles from water. For example, uh, the rapid scent filtration has been applied to remove micro size impurities. But what's actually we need right now is a development of a final process to remove the micro-sized impurities, including the micro-sized molecules and the nano-sized ions. The current techniques people are using in the industry consist of thermal process, ion exchange, and membrane filtration. First of all, the thermal techniques are more familiar to us, people use solar energy to evaporate the seawater, and different kinds of methods are used to collect the water stream to get drinkable water. The drawback of this technique is the high energy cost, and also this purification is not selective. Secondly, um, we are currently using ion exchange in our daily life to soften the tap water. In these techniques, the functionalized pores or gel resin are used to remove ions from water. Last is our membrane filtration techniques. A typical example of this technique is called reverse osmosis process. This process uses an applied pressure on salt water through a permeable membrane to get fresh water and remove ions. But in this technique, we actually require a really high quality performance membrane. That is to say, the membrane has to have a high water permeability to save energy on the applied pressure. Also, the membrane needs to have a satisfactory falling resistance to extend its lifetime. The common material used for the reverse osmosis process are non-filtration polymer membranes, such as polypropylene or PETE polymers. However, the pore size of those materials are around 10 micron to hundreds of micron, which limits its usage in nano-sized ion purifications. So our research on the new membrane filters takes advantage of a material called graphene. The graphene is a novel 2D carbon material with atomic level thickness. It is mechanically strong and thermally stable under daily use conditions. Its hydrophobicity provides little friction with water to ensure a high water permeability and a great falling resistance. Research on graphene-based nanofiltration can be divided into two directions. First direction is to use a single layer graphene sheet with pores on it as a filter. 
The second direction is to form a nano channel by multi-layer graphene sheets to purify water. Both of those two directions could significantly reduce the thickness of the membrane, and the less pressure it applied, the more energy that we could save. The porous graphene-based membranes are usually made of one single layer graphene with spaced pores on it. The selectivity of this membrane is controlled by the pore size and the surface charge around the pores. The thickness of this material could be as thin as an atomic level, and the permeability, according to the recent simulation results, could be up to over 100 liter per square centimeter per day per megapascal. And the permeability is largely affected by the pore size and its hydrophilicity. On the other hand, the laminate graphene based membranes are usually made of multi layer spaced laminates. Those laminates stacking on each other to form nano channel for water to go through and reject the ions. The selectivity is controlled by the interlaced spacing between the laminates. And the thickness of these membranes can be varying from 0.1 micron to 10 micron. And the thickness is also tunable by controlling the amount of materials that we use to form the membrane. According to simulation and very prelim preliminary experimental results, the permeability of these membranes is around 0.1 liter per square centimeter per day per megapascal, such as graphene oxide membranes. And this permeability is mainly affected by the nanochannel length that the water goes through. To conclude, the promising preliminary results of or the graphene-based membranes, the ultrasing laminated graphene oxide show organic solvent permeation and great sieving properties. It also shows a sharp size cutoff at 4.5 astrom, which could impede most of the ions. Its separation capacity is tunable by adjusting the nanochannel size through intercalation of molecules and nanoparticles with different sizes. With the same thickness, the permeability of the nanoporous graphene membrane is on the same order of magnitude as a typical polymer film. That is to say, as we fabricate thinner graphene membranes, this difference could be several orders of magnitude. However, to apply those materials into practical industry, there's a lot of challenges that we have to conquer. The first is that we have to develop a procedure to precisely control the nanochannel size in the membrane. Lots of research groups are working on the reduction of graphene oxide to increase the permeability, but at the same time maintain the nanochannel size of 4.5 astroms. Practically, the ultra-thin graphene membranes are very brittle in the normal direction when applying pressure during filtration. Last but not least, those materials must have to be manufactured at industrial scale to purify large amount of water at the same time. This is the end of this video talk, and I really appreciate for everyone watching it. Our research on graphene membranes and this presentation are supported by the National Science Foundation. Thank you everyone, mask up and stay safe.